Before becoming a personal chef, I would peruse the internet for hours trying to find the answers to what I thought were common questions about the personal chef profession. I was at a loss of where to find the answers. I had all the skills to start a meal prep business, but had a million questions on the logistics of the cook session itself. Do clients typically want dinners for Monday through Friday, or do they want dinners for all seven days of the week? What do you do with extra groceries after a cook session? What questions should I ask at the initial consultation? How do I handle purchasing spices, oils, and vinegars? When and how do I get paid? I couldn't find a single article written by a personal chef answering my questions. There were plenty of non-authorities sharing their idea of questions you should ask a personal chef when hiring, as well as numerous culinary associations trying to get me to attend their schools and expensive groups. But alas, no direct advice from someone in the profession. Interestingly, the articles about what to ask your personal chef appear to be written by someone clearly never have hired or interviewed a personal chef. After extreme frustration, not finding the answers to my questions, I knew I had to put together a knowledge library for aspiring personal chefs wanting to begin their own meal prep business. At the completion of this course, you'll have all the information needed to get your meal prep business off the ground. Instead of going through the trial and error of learning how to run a successful meal prep business, I'm going to show you what I've learned over the years so you don't make the same mistakes I did. This course has six lessons total. In the first lesson, there will be an overview of the meal prep process, and we'll talk about scheduling a typical week. Lesson two will be focused on questions to ask a client during an initial consultation, as well as what to look for during the kitchen tour. The next lesson discusses researching recipes for special diets and allergies, including some of the more common dietary restrictions. Your first cook session will be planned and detailed, including packing a kitchen equipment box, creating an invoice, packaging and label meals, accepting payment, creating a meal prep timeline, and what to wear to a cook session. Finally, you'll learn how to follow up and schedule future appointments, ask for referrals, create a client contract, and learn how to track your client's pantry inventory. To get the most out of this course, it's suggested to watch each of the videos in the six lessons, then implement the steps in a practice session on your own family before attempting a cook session with your first client. Your goal is to create an efficient business model of meal prep. You'll need a systematized checklist to make sure when you leave a kitchen that you've taken out the trash, all the lights are out, the oven is turned off, and the doors get locked. Without a written or mental checklist at each appointment, a key step that makes your business outstanding could be missed. When someone calls to set up a consultation about hiring you as their personal chef, all they're thinking about is, how can you help me? They just want to know if you're able to help them with their problem. Potential clients are thinking about menu offerings you can provide them for meal prep. They're not at all wondering where you went to school, how long you've been in business, or what your liability insurance covers. Their only concern is how you can help them. Regardless of your culinary education or business experience, there are clients for every background, experienced or novice. Everyone had to start somewhere and everyone has a first day in business. You may be trying to decide if you should begin a business of meal prep or dinner parties. After years of experience, I can share with you that running a meal prep business always comes out a winner. Dinner parties are usually special occasion, one time only clients. While meal prep clients on the other hand, are scheduled every single week or every other week. Once you have regular meal prep clients, you have a steady income, a stable business, and you spend less time marketing to new clients. As well, once you get to know the diets of your regular clients, you can quickly and easily put together a weekly menu for them. Meanwhile, dinner parties take much more effort creating unique menus and proposals for each event, along with spending time marketing constantly to get new clients. Personal chefs must be adaptable. At the interview process, the client will say, yes, I love all vegetables. And later on, they'll say, I forgot that I don't like zucchini, olives, cilantro, tomatoes, or cucumbers. Sometimes they'll say, I decided to go vegan, so no meat products from here forward. You have to accept this and decide if this is something you'd like to take on. They may start off wanting a keto diet, then later decide to become a vegetarian. The most important thing to remember is that this is your business and you get to run it how you'd like to run it. I've been in catering since 2005 and started my personal chef business in 2012. 
This course shares my experience over the span of years, but just because I do things one way doesn't mean it's the only way. There is no one way to do things as a personal chef or as a business owner. You can listen to the advice and use it as it applies to your business model. In each lesson, you'll watch a video, then save or print the downloads in each lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll discuss an overview of a meal prep cook session.